Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Serious Sellers Podcast by Helium 10. I'm your host, Bradley Sutton, and this is the show that is our Helium 10 Weekly Buzz, where we give you a rundown of all the goings on in the Amazon, Walmart, and e-commerce world. We have interviews with people in the industry you need to hear from and give train tips of the week for serious strategies for serious sellers of any level in the e-commerce world. Let's see what's buzzing. All right, so took a couple weeks off. We had a Walmart Wednesday last week, and then we had a special listing builder with AI demo that I did in the previous buzz. So it's the first time we've had a buzz over the last couple of weeks, but uh, there's not too much going on. We've got an interesting development with Amazon Alexa, something I think that can uh, be something to look forward to. Uh, we've got some interesting partnerships with Pinterest and Amazon we're going to uh, talk about, and also a, an Amazon glitch, search glitch that has reared its ugly head that I haven't seen in about about four or five months and might be affecting some of you. So I'll show you guys how to look out for that. We've got an interview with a PPC expert where we got some great questions that we're going to go over some of my questions uh, today in the episode. And we've got a training tip of the week to make sure how, how you can make sure that you're notified when critical things are happening to your account. So let's go ahead and hop right into the news. The uh, first story today that we have is a story from uh, ZDNet and it's about Amazon Alexa. All right. It says it's about to get a lot more capable according to the uh, CEO. And basically in a nutshell, what this is talking about is that the CEO of Amazon is saying, hey, they're, they're really going to take Alexa to the next level. And it's going to be kind of like, you know, almost like having chat GPT in Alexa. You know, when Alexa first came out, it was, you know, it was kind of revolutionary, but it's been the same for like, what, you know, 10 years uh, almost, uh, maybe maybe not 10 years, but, but for a number of years. And so there's going to be generative AI. Now, here's the thing of why I'm bringing that up uh, in this buzz, because if that happens to me, that is going to make the shopping experience in Alexa infinite, uh, infinitely, I should say, more kind of like intuitive, right? Like right now, if you were trying to do Amazon shopping on Alexa, you know, to be honest, it's not that great of an experience. Like I don't do it much at all, but now all of a sudden you integrate some kind of generative AI. Now I think you'll see, uh, optimizing your Amazon listings for Alexa is going to get more important. Make sure to tune in this Saturday to the serious sellers podcast. We've got an Amazon algorithm expert, and he actually talks about how to optimize your listings a little bit for Amazon Alexa. But this is an interesting thing to be looking forward to. Will uh, will more customers start shopping on Alexa once this change happens? All right, next article of the day is from TechCrunch, and it's entitled, Pinterest announces multi-year ads partnership with Amazon alongside earnings uh, beat. All right. So this is uh, something that's going to be interesting. You know, um, you're going to start perhaps seeing a, a more integrated experience with Amazon ads right there on Pinterest pages, but then it'll go directly to like the Amazon, uh, the Amazon page, which obviously would, would help with conversion. You know, I think a lot of Amazon sellers have been looking to Pinterest to advertise, but now this is going to take it to uh, another level. Um, and I, I think this, this will be a great move. Uh, especially for those who who have like a lot of trending products and and such as well. Next article here is directly from Amazon, and it was just the uh, Q1 report. Now, now there's a lot of you know numbers that maybe most of you aren't interested in as far as hey what their operating income is and and this and that. But but a couple of things I wanted to to bring out here from this this Q1 report is is how you know something that's not news, but the, but the, he, the CEO said here, Hey, Amazon obsesses over how to make customers lives better each and every day. Right. I think we understand that. So what are some of these ways that they're doing it? And I think this is the uh, a key part here. Now there are 26 million customers ordered or in Q1 ordered items with same day delivery in the quarter, which is an increase of 50%. So as Amazon continues to develop their infrastructure, for for delivery and FBA, this, in my opinion, is going to help you know drive more traffic to Amazon and drive more sales, and also make it more important that you actually have a wide distribution of your your inventory. You know, across you know if you have got a high selling product across Amazon's warehouses. Um, if you ever um, want to know how your distribution is, like potentially where you might be getting these these low. Uh, your fast delivery times, like like same day or something, make sure you go into profits in Helium 10 and go to the uh, inventory heat maps section. And in the inventory heat map section, you'll be able to see all the different warehouses on a, on a geographical map 
so that you can see where your inventory is being stored at. And most likely, um, you know, if you don't have, um, you know, inventory stored in Wyoming, for example, you know, you can just pretty much figure, hey, your Wyoming customers obviously are not getting same day uh, delivery. And then you can, you know, can't really control that as much other than put in more inventory and hope that Amazon distributes it more. So there's a lot of other uh, interesting uh, you know, tidbits on, on what Amazon has released over the last quarter. So make sure to check out that um, that article on their, on their Q1 report. Second to last part of the news today is Amazon search glitch. All right. ASG, um, not to be confused with ASS, which is the Amazon search shuffle, which is another Amazon search anomaly. But basically these anomalies happen on Amazon every now and then. Now, th this is not an official term, but we sellers, I, we did Helium 10, I don't think... I don't think we started that, um, but Amazon search glitch was started maybe like three or four years ago when all of a sudden people would see en masse, like tons and tons of their products de-indexed for main keywords, all right? Importing keywords, all of a sudden, not only are they not ranking, remember ranking and indexing are completely different things. Not only were they not ranking, but they weren't indexed for it, meaning that you know, Amazon didn't relate uh, the, a, key, a certain keyword uh, to their product. You know, you, you couldn't even put an ace in and their and this keyword and their their product, um, you know, come up. That, that's not happening. So Amazon would just de-index en masse a lot of people's main keywords. Now, sometimes it's due to uh, like a mistake, like a um, maybe uh, a category just got changed randomly, right? But a lot of times it was just random and it's something that would last for like, a week to two weeks and it just fixes itself. But we created this anomaly tracker uh, to, to help like kind of detect when this is gonna happen. So take a look here, guys. If I look at this anomaly tracker for the last, let's just go 180 days, you'll see that for months at a time, there were, we weren't detecting any glitches, but then starting in March, there was a little bit of peak. And then really in the last couple of weeks, guys, you can see that there have been an abnormally high number of glitches um, that are happening. And th this is important to know because now you know, like if you were de-indexed, and what I tell everybody is, hey, go to this page, which is at h10.me forward slash ASA, h10.me forward slash ASA. It's our completely free anomaly tracker. You know, you don't even have to be a Helium 10 member to check this page. But check this page. And then if, if you see something that looks like this, like in February and January where there's no glitches, that means it's probably just happening to you and, and maybe something you can fix and you need to go and, and just check your categories and things. But then if, if you don't see anything wrong and then you go to this page and then you see lots of people are, are experiencing this, then you kind of know that an Amazon search glitch is happening and it'll probably, you know, nothing much you can do about it other than wait it out for a week or two. But that's what seems to be going on right now. So uh, I saw in a couple of Facebook groups, people were mentioning this. How about you guys? Uh, have you noticed your keyword ranks going away or um, or something else happening where, um, you know, where all of a sudden you're completely de-indexed? Well, check this page, h10.me forward slash ASA. See if uh, that's affecting, uh, you know, the wide variety of people or if it's just you. And then if it's just you, you can probably take action. Um, so this is something that obviously is going to affect your sales. Another thing to keep in mind is if you have the insights dashboard, um, from helium 10, if you have the insights dashboard from helium 10 activated, that's our new dashboard. You're going to get notified when severe ranking, uh, fluctuations happen. You know, now I'm not talking about de indexing completely, but, but it, it would, it would in be included there. So like you're ranking on page one and then you drop off, you would get a notification right there in the dashboard. Hey, your, your product dropped off 200, 200, uh, you know, spots or 300 spots, in organic rank or sponsored rank. Well, you'll get that notification on your dashboard. So make sure you, you uh, keep up to date and you have that new Helium 10 Insights dashboard active uh, if you're a Diamond and Above member so that you can get those insights. So last up, we actually have a cool party I wanted to make uh, available to the podcast listeners, all right? So first, uh, first access was to Elite members and to Serious Sellers Club members. But now if you're listening to the podcast, you're in Southern California, May 24th, guys, I want you to come out to, uh, we're renting out a Dave and Buster's uh, here, um, and we're going to have a, a really cool party here for a couple of hours. There'll be food, uh, beverages, uh, alcohol. You, you can pay for the alcohol, the, the food we're, we're providing, but make sure to come out. We, we've had a lot of good times. We, we want about 150 sellers uh, to come out if possible. Um, so h10.me forward slash Irvine social, Irvine, I-R-V-I-N-E social. So if you're in Southern California, want to come down for 
for the evening. Um, it'll be after working hours. So make sure to come by h10.me forward slash Irvine social. I would love to meet you there. And the next day for elite members, we actually have the elite workshop, but this one is right now open to elite members, SSC members, and any podcast listeners. So make sure to RSVP if for sure you are going. I'd love to meet you there. All right, next up, this is for sellers who, you know, hey, are you doing like maybe three, four million dollars a year or more on Amazon? Um, if so, great. If not, you know, you're fine. But but if you're if you're a big uh, if you're a big time seller, um, I wanted to invite you to this special workshop that Shivali is going to be doing. So this is for people who want to easily be able to create markets and and tailor make your your businesses specific needs if you need something like just in addition to just what like the regular helium 10 is giving you and you want to start looking at things like at the category level um you want to have even more accurate uh sales estimation looking at categories and subcategories we've got a new uh market tracker 360 presentation um it's now powered by precision precision plus it's our new uh, algorithm for sales estimations um for products for 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 larger sellers. So if you're a larger seller, you know if, if you're like making five hundred thousand dollars a year, like me nowadays, I'm not doing as well as I did in the past. But you know you don't need to attend this. I'm not going to waste your time. But if you're if you're doing two, three, four million dollars a year or more, I highly, highly, highly recommend going to this completely free workshop that we will be doing um, next week. So make sure to sign up at h10.me forward slash 360 webinar h10.me forward slash 360 webinar join uh shivali as she goes uh, deep into this uh this tool that is specifically designed for larger sellers brands agencies aggregators etc all right that's it for the news this week now we're going to go ahead and get into an interview with a ppc expert that we had invited from the show from clear ads and in this case, I actually live threw up a, a couple of questions about um, about I wanted to know what his thoughts were on how many targets to put in a campaign. Everybody has different uh, opinions on this. Like, do you cap it at 10? Do you cap it at five? Do you do one target per campaign? And then my other question is, how do you deal with ASINs that you discover in auto? Do you automatically put it into display and campaigns? And so Shivali was able to um, ask Tom to go ahead and answer these questions. So let's see his answer. I see we have another question here that says for keyword or product targeting campaigns, how many targets do you limit your campaigns to? And for profitable ASIN targets discovered in auto campaigns, do you automatically put them in manual campaigns and sponsored display campaigns? Hey, Bradley. Nice to have your question. Nice to see you again. Um, yeah, I'm going to answer all of this. So for, for product targeting, I try and limit my campaigns to around 10. So that's a lot less than I would with my keyword campaigns. With keyword campaigns, I'm normally not going beyond 20 keywords. And if I'm going for rank or if I know a keyword's got a decent volume, um, I'm usually building keyword campaigns, maybe one or two keywords there. But for, for PAT targeting, so when I'm doing competitive targeting, I would restrict that to no more than 10. Um, for those profitable ASINs that you discover in auto campaigns or even category targeting campaigns, um, yeah, I'm automatically going to transfer those over to a sponsor product manual campaign. Um, in regards to sponsor display, I don't know if I'll do that immediately, but I, I do think sponsored display through PAT targeting is usually the most cost effective way to use sponsored display if you are going for something that, um, you know, if, you, if you're going down that profitability route. Other areas of sponsor display where you're targeting audiences that's you know, usually hitting the top of the funnel a lot quicker and you're casting a wider net so you're opening yourself up to a higher ACOS. Um, yeah, it depends what your goal is through those sponsor display campaigns. Is it to go on the offensive on a competitor? Yeah, I don't see why you would need to stall, especially if you've already identified that those ASIN targets are profitable, then you've probably not got much to lose by targeting the sponsor display campaigns as well especially as the, the, the placements will be different. Usually through the manual campaigns for uh, ASIN targeting, you're either going to appear a lot around them in the search results or on the product display pages in those carousels. Uh, usually when you scroll down, you'll see sponsored products related to these items or similar items based on your search. The sponsored display campaigns are usually going to be below the buy box and below the bullet points that you've got on your listing or on a competitor's listing. All right. Thank you for that quick interview and the answers to my question. 
next week, uh, next Tuesday, we'll have the complete recording on this podcast of that whole episode. We probably got to about 20, 25 different PPC questions. It's always a favorite, one of the favorite uh, episodes of the month. So make sure to tune into the podcast next next week for the rest of that episode. Uh, last up, we've got a, a training here that Carrie did. You know, we talked about knowing about when critical things happen to your accounts. Well, it's not just about Amazon search glitches that happen. You know, someone might change your title. You might get a bad review. Um, maybe your category change. You know, maybe your dimensions change. Like, did you know that if your dimensions change, you know, you could be losing a dollar, two dollars, three dollars per every single order that you're getting. So it's important to uh, obviously to understand exactly when these um, happen and as soon as they happen so that you can take action. So Carrie is going to give a quick two minute demonstration on how to do that. Hello everyone, today I wanted to talk with you about something I think is really important, but a lot of people kind of forget to do this, and that is set up alerts. So there's a few reasons why you should set up alerts, and that's because you can get notifications if your listing's suppressed, if you get negative reviews, a whole bunch of different things. Um, and that can alert you to just take action. And so um, I wanted to set this up because not only is it important to you, you could get notifications via email or text, but also we have our new insights dashboard, and these alerts will pop up on the dashboard, so they're very visible to you if you set them up properly. So I'm going to go ahead and um, I'll share my screen. And so this is what alerts looks like all set up, but if you need, if you want to get them all set up and maybe this is blank when you go into the alerts tool, you're going to click on this settings button up at the top right hand corner. Okay. And then um, once you hit that settings button, it'll take you to the actual settings. Now, there are some default settings that are going to already be checked, like the buy box one, the buy box lost, um, a new one to three star um, product review, and then also a new negative um, seller feedback, I believe those are the ones that are already default. So those will actually show up in the um, insights dashboard just automatically without you setting them up. However, if you wanted to see a lot of these other things, like if your title gets changed or your categories changed, or um, especially, you know, if your listing is suppressed, there's a lot of things that you might want to see. You can check off each one to get a notification. Okay. So you can actually get uh, checked to get email notifications or SMS notifications for buy box lost or listing suppressed. So if you really want to know like right away, these things, you can get a text message there. And those are the only two you get a, a text message for, but you can choose the, you know, when you get this actual alert um, in terms of email and you can do immediate daily, or you can turn it off. Okay. So, um, but you want to turn on these notifications though, so that you can see them all in the insights dashboard. It'll give you, you know, daily updates of things that are going on and on and things you might want to adjust. Um, and it's really helpful just to make sure that you are taking care of your business and staying on top of things. I know I've had times where things have got a listing has been suppressed and I didn't have my alerts set up and I didn't know for a few days. And so you're losing money by, you know, not noticing that a listing is suppressed. So definitely check it out. If you haven't set up your alerts, make sure to go set up your alerts. It'll be very helpful. And I think you'll be really happy that you did have a good day. All right. Thank you very much, Carrie, for that. Well, that's it for the uh, news and uh, everything else this week on The Buzz. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. I can't wait to see you guys next week. And I can't wait to see you guys at that Helium 10 social event on May 24th. So make sure to come by h10.me forward slash Irvine social. I'll see you there and I'll see you next week on The Buzz so we can see what's buzzing. Bye bye now.